Hi, this is Elaine from the Sewing Basket in Plymouth, Wisconsin. In this video, we're going to talk about how to make a patch on your embroidery machine. Just, just a little clarity on terminology. In the Brother Machine Manual, the feature we're going to talk about is called applique or instant applique. To us quilters, what they're calling an applique, we call a patch. This is making a freestanding item that can be sewn onto something else. What stands a patch apart from a regular applique is it has a finished outer edge. As you can see on Mickey here on the left, there's a black satin stitch that we've added all the way around the outside. So this edge is finished, allowing us to sew this patch of Mickey Mouse onto whatever we'd like. Great for repairing a hole in kids' jeans, can be sewn on a hat, or any other item that you'd like. The supplies that you need for this project are obviously in an embroidery machine with either a patch function or the ability to do outline shapes in a running stitch and a satin stitch. You'll need embroidery thread to match whatever design you choose, tearaway stabilizer, and then also either Floriani Wet and Gone wash away stabilizer or OESD Aqua Mesh wash away stabilizer, a fabric glue stick and the background fabric that you'd like to stitch your design on that's large enough to fill your hoop. The first thing to do is select your design. This can be a built-in design from your machine or something you've brought in from another site. Things to consider are the size of the design, remembering that the design as we create the patch will grow by about a quarter inch all the way around, so you want to be sure it makes the finish size that you'd like, including that outer edge. After selecting the design you want for your patch, we go into the Edit menu and select the Instant Applique button. The next video will show you that process. So here we are at the machine. We are going into our embroidery category. We're going to pick the design we want, and I'm going to just pick a Mickey Mouse here and we want the smaller one. Um, he's four by three. I'm going to set him in and under my edit menu I'm going to find the button that looks like the shield and that is the automatic patch or applique button. On this machine I have a choice for distance. If you look the distance between the satin stitch and the outer edge of the design is getting a little wider. And I'm going to say OK when I have the look that I want and then embroider and I'm ready to go. What it has done is it has added three things to the bottom. A cut line, a stitch line, and the finished satin stitch. Those are the things that create the embroidery and make it turn into a patch. We'll talk about the how-to shortly. The machine that I was stitching on asked how far we would like those satin stitches placed away from the design. It popped up right on the machine. Most machines don't do that. That basting distance or distance between the design and the outline stitch is set inside the machine as a standard default setting. If you'd like to change that, you can go into your menu along the top of your screen, click Menu, and go to the page that shows Embroidery Basting Distance. You can see where that can be changed. On the smaller machines, that may not be an option. In order to do this process on a machine that does not have an instant applique or patch button, you need to have a shapes feature on your machine. Most brother machines, even the very small ones, offer shapes, circles, squares, hearts, things like that, in a variety of different stitch outlines. You need to have a running stitch option and a satin stitch option. The next video will show you how to do that, uh, this process on that type of machine. If we're on a machine that doesn't have the automatic patch function, we're going to go into embroidery. We're going to pick the design we want. I'm going to just pick Minnie's little face here and I'm going to set her in and then I'm going to add a shape I'm going to go into shape 
and I'm going to add that running circle around her, set it in, and I'm going to make that circle bigger. Just go into my size, all arrows out, makes it a little bigger. And I now have her patch is going to be 4.27 round. I like that. And then I'm going to push my duplicate button. And that is going to give me a second running stitch. And again, I'm going to move. I'm going to just touch this dot. We'll move it to the center. So right now I have mini, and I have two circles around her. That will add my placement stitch of where I'm going to cut her out, and the next one would be the placement stitch in the hoop. So I have one more thing that I have to add. I go to add, I go back to my shapes, and I pick the satin stitch, and I set that in, and then I go to size again, and I want that bigger, and I want it to be 4.27, which is the size of the first two that I added. And I don't quite have the exact size because the satin stitch is going to be a little different width than the running stitch, but we should be pretty close. This is one that I would test first. Again, the difference there is the running stitch is much narrower than the satin stitch, and my choices are either 4.24 or 4.30. So I believe 4.3 will work well, but again, I would test this before I stitch. I say OK, ready to embroider. Next, choose the size embroidery hoop you need to hold the design that you've selected. You're going to hoop your background fabric and a layer of medium weight tear away beneath it. Remember, if you've picked a design that's very heavy in stitch count, you may want to add a second piece of tear away stabilizer underneath the hoop. That's called floating stabilizer. So you would have your fabric and a single layer of tear away inside the hoop and another piece of tear away stabilizer floating between the bed of the machine and the bottom of the hoop. This is the step that always seems odd. Normally when you're embroidering, you never take your project out of the hoop. But yes, in this case you do. Once your design is stitched and you've done that first running stitch outline, you take your design out of the hoop and cut around that outline stitching. So you'll end up with your applique freestanding in your hand with a raw edge all the way around it. Set aside the applique that you just stitched and cut out. Grab your hoop and hoop two layers of water-soluble stabilizer. Um, we use either Floriani Wet and Gone or Aquamesh by OESD. So you're putting two layers of that into your hoop, and then you're going to push the button to stitch the next step in your embroidery process, which is another outline stitch. Once that outline is stitched, you're going to take a glue stick and put some glue around the inside of that stitched design. Take the freestanding design that you've cut out and place it right inside the stitching outline where you've put the glue and press it into place. The next stitching step is going to go around the outline of this applique. It will run a wide zigzag stitch first and then go around and hold it down with a satin stitch. It's very easy for the design to slip out of place. That's why we glue it. But I also tend to use a stylus or an awl to hold the edge down as I stitch around so that the outline, or excuse me, the design doesn't slip outside of the outline. To change your machine speed, you'll go into the menu and find the page that says Embroidery Speed. I usually go down to 350, which is very slow, um, but that's the perfect speed for taking that first um, stitch around the design. When the outline
outline stitching is done, remove the design from the hoop and trim the stabilizer close to the running stitch. Leave yourself a good eighth to a quarter inch. You don't want to get too close to accidentally snip those satin stitches. So just trim it close and then we're ready to go. To remove the stabilizer from that outer edge, rinse it in warm water and the stabilizer will completely dissolve away and you'll be left with a nice clean satin stitch around the outer edge of your design. Once your design is dried, you are set to use it in any way you'd like. These make great patches to cover a tear or rip in children's clothing, cute for embellishing projects, adding to purses, zippy pouches, anything like that. Hope you've enjoyed this project and we look forward to seeing you again soon. We look forward to seeing you again next month. In the meantime, remember, a pattern is only a suggestion. You can make whatever you'd like to make. We'll look forward to seeing everything that you create on the playground. Be sure to share and show everybody what you've been up to. You like to see what they make. They like to see what you make. Thanks. Bye.